Oh, the potato command said something, but it was about COVID and not the elephant in the room. Governor DeSantis, the Sigma Chad from Florida, knocks the potato for obsession with COVID mandates while Afghanistan and our southern border continues to burn. Florida governor says U.S. is in for a rocky three and a half years under the potato. Yeah, we all knew this. Everyone knew this. Even the people who voted for that dumb son of a bitch knew this. Well, elections have consequences. And we're reeling from those right now. Right now, we're reeling from it. The whole world just basically knows that under this particular president that we have, I wouldn't trust us. Why? Afghanistan, the people who supported us there have been left out, hung out to dry. As a matter of fact, a lot of them right now are being killed. Oh, I mean, the Taliban assured that they would be okay. <laughs> right. So the potato came out two times yesterday. One, to give a COVID-19 sort of like to a warning to Florida. You better do this or else we're going to do this. Tenth Amendment, motherfucker. Tenth fucking amendment. Remember that there, Biden? Oh, that's right. You don't. You, you basically, you barely remember the first. And then he even came out and talked to George Stephanopoulos. And then basically ducked and shucked and jive and weaved and sort of obfuscated and, you know, sort of danced out of the way of taking responsibility. And on the question of, hey, there was George Stephanopoulos said, hey, there was people falling from the airplanes. Oh, that was four or five days ago. Yeah, it, it was. It doesn't matter. It happened. Don't say, oh, that's that was happened thousands of years ago. Oh, no. You don't get to do that there, potato. You don't get to fucking do that. So, President Biden cannot give pushing, pushing covert coronavirus restriction to rest even while Afghanistan falls in his wake, Florida Governor DeSantis argued on sanity. During the potato's address Wednesday, the president neglected to acknowledge the current events unfolding in the Middle East and instead attacked state leaders like DeSantis for refusing to force, enforce mask mandates for children in school. Again, all DeSantis is saying is that, hey, that's a parental choice. That's not a government choice. It's not a top-down approach. It's from a bottom-up. If the parents want the children to wear it, wear it. If they don't, they don't. That's all he's saying. And he's not going to force his will on people, unlike the potato and his administration wants to force their will on everybody, regardless. While you have all the stuff going on in Afghanistan, obviously all that stuff at the southern border, one of the biggest border disasters in history of our country, inflation, gas prices, what does he do? He's obsessed with having the government force kindergartners to wear masks all day in school, the governor said. Yes, and this is why the potato came out and was talking about the coronavirus and COVID. That's something he can control. That's something he can sort of do something about. It's something that pulls well. Everything else, he can't do anything about. He fucked up. He done fucked up. Mark Milley, general, fucked up. Austin Taylor, whatever that freaking dude is, fucked up. Our 17 intelligence agencies, fucked up. Matter of fact, I don't want to necessarily Put the blame on them. They probably told the potato, hey, we can't do this. We need to stick with the Trump plan. No, 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 no. We're not going to stick with the Trump plan. You know what the Trump plan is or was? It was a three, basically in a couple stages. One stage was to get out all the civilians, Americans, out on planes. That was one. Two was get the Afghan interpreters, uh, mechanics, uh, all the, the brain trust that was helping us get them out of Afghanistan. The third was to remove all of the military as soon as everyone was gone. I heard this on the Glenn Beck this morning and he basically, in not so many words, he told, the tr Donald Trump told the interpreters or the interpreters uh, for the Taliban and all their entourage at Camp David and says, we're going to leave. But during that time, if you mess with us, if you even fuck with us, someone gets a hangnail. We'll bomb the shit out of your villages of your birth. Something like that. To that respect, respect. And then the course tell them, oh, no, 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 no. We're not going to do anything. You can leave. Yeah, you, we, we promise. 
And he goes, no, I'm serious. I will, I will lay waste to all your villages, all your family members, your friends, your dogs, your goats, everything. And the Taliban knew that, yeah, we were going to leave and Donald Trump was not to be messed with. So what did the potato do? Oh, easy. He says, no, I don't want, I don't want even the stain or even the touch of Donald Trump on this. We're going to extend it out instead of May 1st. We're going to extend it out to whenever this month or whatever. And then we're going to draw down the military first who's, who's there to protect the withdrawal. And so when he did that, he had to bring back military in into Kabul. Oh yeah. Kabul is not the best place to do the withdrawal. They should have done it at Bagram, which was, had a bigger footprint, bigger, uh, security apparatus, but no, 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 no. Biden couldn't be troubled with that. DeSantis explained that Biden is more concerned with federal government forcing masks in Florida schools and overruling parents instead of putting out foreign fires. Exactly. You see, we don't need the potato fucking with the states. The states are designed to work on their own. Each 50 state is its own laboratory or its own, you can look at it as their own fiefdom, where they control things. They don't need the top-down approach from the federal government. They can handle it. Obviously, California really can't handle it. The point being is that, why is he messing with COVID right now? His main concern, in my fucking opinion right now, is Afghanistan and getting our, not only our troops out of there, but the civilians out of there. Even though those same civilians that are there right now, that probably voted for this son of a bitch right here. I'm willing to concede that we should get them out. Even though... I don't want them. I want them to suffer. That's the reptilian brain in my in my mind right now saying, fuck those people. You voted for this potato. You fucking deal with the consequences. I, I can't do it. Maybe it's me, me, me and my, you know, my my the Baptist side of my my being. Even though I haven't been to church in a long time. I've drove by church, but I haven't been there. Perhaps I have some sort of sympathy for them. Not much. Once you get back here, fuck him. And he goes on, you got to wonder, where are your priorities that you're so obsessed with the issue and be so obsessed with taking away parents' rights? And you're letting Afghanistan burn, our border burn, and so many of things in our country fall to pieces. The governor faulted the president for being asleep at the switch. Yeah. In terms of approach to withdrawing the U.S. from Afghanistan, DeSantis said he agrees it was always necessary to bring the troops home. Agreed. But Biden's swift action should have been better thought out. It should have been. You should have brought everybody out in May if you were going to extend it. You should have brought. You should have put a a, no, a note out. Said, "Hey, if you're an American, get the fuck out now. Come to these airports. They're, they're secure. And if you have problems, let us know. We'll get you the fuck out of there." Instead, what did the potato do? Remove the air force, so you had no air cover. Removed our military, so you don't go ground cover. Then what? You shut down Bagram, apparently in July. In July? Here it is, August. It, not only Biden's policy caused disaster in Kabul and throughout Afghanistan, but DeSantis pointed out that other global adversaries like China, Russia, and North Korea are looking on and identifying weaknesses from our U.S. commander-in-chief. No, they know. They know as soon as he took office that this fucking potato is a fucking pushover. And he is a pushover. What is he doing right now? Is By the way, boys and girls in Lost Land, where is the potato right now? Oh, that's right. He's in Delaware. Or he's soon to be there shortly. There's news reports and a Twitter post from uh, sources, and you take that for the grain of salt, saying that Biden hasn't been able to sleep. Obviously, you're done fucked up. It's weighing on you there, potato, isn't it? All your fuck-ups are weighing on you. You wanted this leadership role there, you fucking potato. You got it. And then you fucked up. I've been in many leadership positions in my military career. Have I met, have I always made the best choices? No, but I stuck by it. And you know what? I took responsibility for my actions. You, you fucking potato can't, you can't. You're, it's impossible for you to take responsibility for your actions. And it shows. See, as an NCO, as a sergeant first class, you you make decisions. And if you mess up, guess what? It's on you. You're the one who made the decision. Same thing with officers. If they make a decision and you mess up, guess what? It's on you. 
You can't blame, well, my soldiers didn't do this correctly. No, it's on you. Regardless if they fucked up, it's on you. you got to take responsibility for General Milley's actions. Austin Taylor, whatever his name is, the sec dev. you got to take his... you got to take responsibility for his actions or lack of inaction. You need to take... Potato, you need to take responsibility for your lack of inaction and your complete, utter fuck-up in this situation. Completely, 100%. But you can't do it. You're trying to push it off to other people. You're saying, well... I, I, I just, it, it was going to happen anyways. No, back in May, you were saying, hey, it, everything will be fine. The, the Afghan National Army will be fine. No, no. I've never went over to Afghanistan and Iraq, but I can tell you, just from a cursory internet search, talking to my fellow troops who were, went over there, and just the intelligence coming out of there, that these people were, especially just the regular ground pounders in Afghanistan, the Afghan National Army people, they were fucking, they were weak. Very weak. They weren't well trained. Even though we tried to train them, but you can't, you can't train people who don't want to, who, who's, whose heart is not in it. You can't do it. You can try. Maybe you get lucky with 1%. But are they, yeah, you still have 99% that's going to tuck tail and run. That's exactly what happened. He bet everything on the come out that the Afghan National Army was going to do their job. And he rolled snake eyes. He crapped out. He done fucked up. Say what you want about Trump. But Trump wasn't a pushover. He knew how to negotiate. This motherfucker right here can't negotiate shit. This is what happens. Elections have consequences. When you vote for a fucking potato like this motherfucker, this is what happens. When you have inept leadership, this is what happens. When you hire people based on skin color alone and not on qualifications, this is what you happen. Diversity hires, they're not good. Maybe you get lucky that one of the diversity hires is actually competent. But more often than not, diversity hires are the opposite of or opposite of competency. They're in fucking competent. They don't know how they have gender studies degrees. They don't know what the fuck they do. They've been hanging out in K Street and they think they know what to do and they got hired because they supported this fucking potato. And they get put into positions they can't handle. And folks out there for you, for you who, for those who voted for this son of a bitch, this is on you. And I stated this before in a couple of videos in the last couple of days. This is on you. You fucked up. I did all my best. I tried to make sure our country was successful as possible by getting Donald Trump back into office. And what happens? No. You said fuck it. No. No. Mean tweets. And you voted for this fucking desiccated sack of shit. This is what happens when you vote in incompetent motherfuckers who don't know how to use the full force of the American American policy and American firepower. You done fucked up. Hopefully, by 2024, it'll either be Ron DeSantis or Donald Trump back in office or in office. Because I don't know if we're going to last three and a half years. Maybe we will. Maybe we won't. But this son of a bitch right here, this fucking Joe Biden potato motherfucker, is in. He's in. He's there. Is he going to resign? No. Should he? Yeah. But he won't. But all you have to know is... If you take anything out of this video, all you have to realize is that what is he doing right now? Where's the potato? Is he um, at the White House? No. Either at Camp David or his house in Delaware. Again, yeah, he could lead from any of those positions. But it's all about optics, folks. Boys and girls and Lazarland. Optics. If you're not at HQ at the board pushing pieces of military units around saying we need to do this we need to do that optics 
right now he's showing us and showing the world and more importantly showing the Taliban that the United States is fucking weak that he can't make a decision he's not up for the job he's not cut out for it and you people out there again that voted for this son of a bitch you're the blame for this it's not me you're to blame for this shit you put him in the office you reap the fucking whirlwind.